So over the last few days, I've been kind of pottering around with um, this uh, Sweet Home 3D. Uh, it's an open source and free piece of software. And I've been really impressed with what you can do with it. So I thought I'd just make a quick room just for kind of demonstration purposes. Um, hopefully it'll only take a few minutes, so let's see how it goes. So we create a room. So let's say our room is a six meters long by four meters. And so it's a nice square. Okay, so we have that in there now. And then we want to put some walls. So we click the wall tool, do some walls. Okay, uh, that'll do for walls. Now what we want is a door, so bring a door in. Okay, great, and then let's finish the walls off. And let's make, you can see here, it's all being rendered in real time. Um, let's bring this door up. And let's make this door say, uh, actually that's probably about right, it's, it's two meters. Um, what you will see is that the wall there doesn't extend all the way, so we can extend that out, there we go extended wall. You can just move this room along so you can see the floor plan is in a different place if we choose to move it, which you probably won't want to do. So we can basically say that's our room. Let's um, lock this base plan. So we can look around this and um, we can do a virtual visit, uh, which is basically, um, I can use WASD. You can see here's my little dude. Come on little dude. Right, let's bring him in to the room, make him a bit bigger first, okay so let's bring him into the room and let's put him there, okay so you can see as I'm, I'm using WASD here actually and I'm, I'm just, you can see as I rotate the mouse it changes his angle, so we've got a box room now, now what we want to do is say let's put in a window, let's put that in there, boom we've got a window, and let's say we are doing a kitchen, it's about the right size for a kitchen, we can just drag and drop items in, let's put the washer there, cooker next to that, dishwasher next to that, fridge and freezer up in this corner, and a stupid place, never mind, and then a bunch of more stuff so we can see as I move around the room, again using WSD, here we go, we've got some units there, some units there, and this is all taking a matter of seconds. So that's kind of cool, we've got some units in, now what I want to do is put a TV in, something along those lines, so let's go living room, let's bring a TV unit in, and let's put it in an awkward place. Okay, so you see that, that's a stupid place to put it, we can instantly see that. So we know that a sensible place may be, say, the middle of the room, and then we can bring a corner sofa up into there. There we go, we've got a corner sofa. And these are all stock files. Now you're not going to want to have your corner sofa there, are you? So what we may do is say move all these bits to the other wall. So that then becomes a much more sensible space. And there uh, we've got a TV that's the wrong way around. So to fix that we simply get go to it and click the drag. Bada boom bada bing. Okay, so now we've got a room. Um, let's say we want to, I don't know, paint the walls. That's always something that people like to do. Okay, so we select all the walls. Oops. Okay, and then we go modify walls. Right click, modify walls. Let's give them a color. Let's say we want this room to be green. Okay, so we selected green. Okay. Now what you see that that's only done that on the outside of the walls. So we can control Z, right click again, modify walls, color, and let's go with that green that we had. So here we've got the recent colors here, which is always handy. And you'll see we've got a horrible green room. Okay, so let's control Z that. Let's do modify walls again, and let's put something a little bit nicer. So let's do texture and wall and let's go for uh, some sort of horrible oh there we go nice stuff okay so we're kind of going rustic here and uh, we want that, on that, want that on all the walls so let's say that our outside wall is just a color we must remember to set the color Okay, 
There we go. Right. So now we've done textures, we've got objects in the room, we've got a door, we know how much the door opens, blah blah blah. So next thing is lighting. Now lights are the, probably one of the strangest things. So we know that for example um, we've got an incandescent light source here, and another one here, and then we're gonna put in a up light here and a white light source here. Okay, so we've not done anything about elevation of these, so I'm just going to drag my little dude down and I'm going to tell him to get on his knees. So just dragging him down to a lower elevation. And we we'll double double click on that. Now you see on this bottom left thing we've got all the uh, all the objects that are in the room. So we can say the elevation. Now the elevation is essentially the height of what the light is. So we know that our walls, for example, are uh, 250 high. And our light source is at 220, so we could probably put that a little bit higher. Uh, these ones need to be at roughly, say, 160, and again, 160. And then we can see our light stand. Why can we not see you? Let's let's find out what's going on there. So this is actually uh, is an up light. Ah, there we go. Okay, I'm just going to control. Right, okay. So uh, we can actually change the light power as well. Now, what we're gonna just do is wander into the corner. So we're sat in a chair now, and then we're gonna, we can now preview how that'll look. So we click create photo, and then we just go to best, and you'll see now we've got lights, and then we click create. No, oh, this takes a few minutes. So what that's doing is actually rendering an image of how things will look with all the uh, light sources included. So, basically, if you wanted to design a room, you can basically preview how it'll actually look. Um, there are different options. This is 3D view. Um, we can also do, uh, you know, different settings. Uh, one of my favorite is uh, depth fill, but this is nice as well. A bit of fisheye. Um, we can also bring that image size up. So, say for example, uh, we want an 800 by, and it has to has to be constrained because we're doing a fisheye. Um, just as it's generating that. So it's interesting because you can see how a room should look, uh, how it should kind of function, how the lighting in a room should look, and you, we were able to do that in six or seven minutes. Now you can also bring squares in, make objects, show boxing in, have say pipes and stuff like that. So it's quite a useful, really simple to use tool. Um, I rate it. It's free and open source, so get, uh, get contributing. There's also a uh, I got furniture here and then uh, is it add to home? No, furniture. Uh, you're able to get furnitures and uh, uh, specific furniture and furniture libraries. So if I click find models and then just drag this into here, you see there's a bunch of models ready to go and there's a bunch of contributors. Uh, uh, doing all sorts of really cool stuff. Uh, you can see there's an Ubuntu clock. I mean, what software can possibly fail if you can have an Ubuntu clock? That's like the benchmark of good software, right? So you can see here, this is our uh, horribly plastic looking chair uh, rendered into the image with a fisheye lens. Uh, yeah, really cool. Um, I want to say good work to everybody that's worked on this project. Um, who is? Let's quick, quick kudos. Um, Funnily enough, it actually runs quite well despite it being a Java application. But uh, etext.com um, and yeah, here's a sweet home homepage. Get over there, download it. I'm pretty sure that it's uh, yeah, it should be cross platform because it's Java. And there's a bunch of other really cool um, bits that you can grab as well. So it might be suitable, for, say, for planning your classroom. I think that was the uh, the only education twist I can have on it, uh, or your IT suite. So enjoy, uh, I shall see you soon.